Hello guys, I'm Sriman. In this video, I will bring you through electromagnetic induction. A lot of people are saying this topic is hard, they need help, so this video is for you. Be sure to watch this video till the end because I'll be highlighting three things that you guys will take note of. Number one, very important, how to break down this big Faraday's equation and apply it to many, many concepts that Cambridge tests you, right? And don't get confused. I'll bring you through it. Number two, different, different example questions. I'll bring you through them and help you gain the confidence for this topic. Number three, I will highlight the common misconceptions that people have for this topic. And I don't want you to fall for it, okay? So be sure to watch this video till the end and let's jump right in. The main understanding from this video is the Faraday's equation. Let's recall Faraday's equation. E is equals to minus d phi over dt. So in the kinematics video, if you guys have not watched it, I talk about the things that you should take note when drawing graphs. Okay, if you look at a phi t graph in the examination and they draw some weird graph, what does the gradient of the graph represent? It represents E? No, negative E because of the negative sign right here. Now let's break down the magnetic flux linkage. EMF is the rate of change of magnetic flux linkage. This thing right here is equal to the number of turns of the coil times the magnetic flux, all right? And the magnetic flux can be divided as B A cosine of theta. Why is this the cosine of theta? So for example, you have a plane like this, okay? This is the area of the coil. You have a B field that is incident. Guys, ask her this question. Is B field a vector or a scalar? A vector, right? It has a direction. So you put that sign. Now, what do you guys know? Vectors have direction and they can be resolved. So if we look at the normal and calculate this angle as theta, if we take the cosine of the theta, you will get the perpendicular component. And that is what we want. And that's why it's a cosine and not the sine of theta. Okay? So what is the overall equation? N B A cosine of theta. Thus, E is equals to minus D N B A cosine theta over dt. Yes guys, very important thing for this topic, there's a lot of differentiation going on. Please do not separate math and physics. Very important, okay? So what do you do when answering a question? Very simple guys. First step, you identify the constants in the equation, in this equation. For example, a number of turns of the coil is constant. What do you do? You pull it out. So it will become E equals to minus N D B A cosine theta over D T. You pull out whatever is constant and then the rest you just substitute it in. Now I will bring you through the different scenarios that Cambridge loves to test and students get confused. Join me along till the end of the video. The first scenario that Cambridge tests is that the B changes with time. Okay, how does B change with time, you're asking me? Let's go back to electromagnetism. It's just one chapter away. For a long straight conductor, okay, at the distance of R, okay, at this point A, what is the magnetic field value? What's the B? It is nu naught I over 2 pi R, correct? You guys know this. So in the question, guys, two things can change. Let's first deal with the fact that Everything else is constant, okay, if you put a bracket, I only changes, I changes. Now, let's differentiate, guys. Nothing to be scared about. Physics does require differentiation. If you differentiate, you'll get dB over dt is equals to u naught over 2 pi r. r is constant, di over dt, correct? It's kind of like implicit differentiation. But the idea is, if the current changes, the magnetic field changes. How can the current change? The current can change in two ways. Number one, there is an alternating current. Number two, it can also change due to increase or decrease in the magnitude of the current. They just increase or decrease, you change the resistance in the circuit and it happens. So when the current changes, the B field changes. dB over dt is in this equation that gives rise to the EMF. Note this flow of logic. Don't jump from here to here 
then to here, then it generates EMF. Now what is the second case guys? Second case is R changes. Okay, this one is a bit more complicated because it's in the denominator. But the thing you'll get is dB over dt is equals to, this just if you differentiate it, but the main thing you need to take note, don't ignore all this, is that when there's a change in the radius, there's a change in the B. That's a change in this equation, which will generate an EMF. So how does the R change? For example, you move, can you move, there's a coil that is placed at this point A, the center of the coil. Current is flowing through this long straight conductor. Now, this coil is moved away. So this distance is R1. Now it's moved to a distance of R2. So the new coil is now right here. So it moves this way. The R changes, right? So if the R changes, what happens? R changes, B field, what happens? Weakens. It becomes weaker. So dB over dt, it has a value. There's a change. Thus, gives rise to your EMF. Note this flow of logic, guys. When you're trying to explain questions in Cambridge, please take it step by step by step. All right? Now I'm going to go through an MCQ question from 1JC. And I would like you to think of the answer. So this is from River Valley High School 2010 prelims MCQ question. Now you have a wire carrying current and the, there's a coil right next to it which moves with a velocity v in the same direction as the current. The question is, is there EMF or no EMF induced in the coil? Pause and think about it. So the answer is there's no EMF. There's no induced current. Why? Now, let's address this point by point. First, the long straight wire, you can use right hand grip rule and it, can, it, it will generate concentric circles of magnetic field. Am I right? This is what is studied in electromagnetism. Now, the wire moves from, say, point A to point C. All right? It moves to point C. Now, the B field, let's calculate the B field at this point using this formula. We apply this formula over. Do you guys all agree that BA is equal to BC? Because... Current is constant, the radius, which is the distance from the wire is constant, B field is constant. So there is no change in B. dB over dt is zero, so there is no induced EMF. Now let's bring to the next part. A changes with time. Okay, so B is constant, A changes with time. How can A change, you are asking me? Number one, for example, you increase the area which the B field strikes. So how is that possible? Either, for example, you have a coil, the B field only strikes this portion, but now you increase the area. So you put like a bigger magnet and it strikes this entire position. So you increase the area or you increase the size of the coil itself, which is actually pretty hard. But I'll go through an MCQ question right now that covers this concept in detail. All right, here is a question from 2010 SAJC, Prelims. Now what you have is that you have a kink right here, it's just a small coil of wire and that random dude pulls so that the kink like becomes smaller and then it just vanishes. These are the values of B, the diameter of the kink, the time to straighten this kink as well as the resistance of the wire. The question is what is the power that is generated? How do you answer this question? First identify what is changing guys. What is changing? Area is changing. The area of the coil that's illuminated by the B field is changing. So if you just modify this equation, N doesn't exist because it's just one turn. Cosine theta is just perpendicular. So it just reduces to B D A over D T. Correct? B is constant. So what you do, you suck in your B right here. I want to do the calculations. Now area, how does the area change? You take the total area, which is, you got a diameter, right? So you can just use pi d over 2 square. And you suck in the diameter. You will get the area. You got the time interval as well. So you just divide by t, you substitute in, and you'll get an EMF of 8.835 times 10 to the power of minus 5 volts. Did you guys get this answer? Alright, from now, what is the power generator? It's not related to this topic. P is equals to V square over R. So if you put, in this case, just use E square. So it doesn't matter if it's negative or positive. And you will get 4.9 times 10 to the power of minus 9 watts. 
And this is your answer in the MCQ question. So when you face a new challenging question, always think of what is the change. Is the area or the B field? In this case, it's the area. Good. Another way how the area changes is the concept of the moving rod. A very important example that is raised in the topic. You will get the formula E equals to BLD. How in the freaking world do you go from here to here? Let's take it step by step. Now, E is equals to, the modulus of E is equals to D, B, A, okay, over DT. We just keep it simple. Ignore the N and the cosine theta. What is the area? So let's understand this. You have a wire, okay, and the B field is going inwards. This wire is attached to some external conductor like this. So this is the wire that is moving, okay, that is moving to the right. The B field is going inwards. Now guys, what is the change? The area is changing because this area A is changing. If we take this distance as L, okay, this distance as L, if we take this distance as X, alright guys, so it is just B, L, X over DT, correct? Because area is L times X. Now DX over DT is what? Velocity is change in displacement over time, right? So it is just D, L, V. This is the derivation. Now what's the third thing that can change? We have dealt with B, we have dealt with A, N, N rarely changes. How can you change the number of turns of the coil? It's quite hard. Cosine of theta or theta changes with time. Now, how do you deal with theta changes? This occurs in something called a generator. Okay? Now we are going to break down what happens in a generator. E is equals to minus N B A D cosine theta over DT. Correct? Because all the rest are just constant. Only the angle at which the B strikes the coil changes. So now theta, if we go back to circular motion, omega is D theta over DT. Correct? So if we just bring it over, it is just minus N B A D cosine omega t over dt. Correct guys? Now if we differentiate cosine omega t, what will you get? You get negative sign. So negative cancels and you get nba omega sine omega t. Now how does this look like in a graph? We have a graph of e against time for a generator. Just use math. You have learned this that the coefficient of sine will give you the amplitude. So it will be like a sine graph with a peak value of n b a omega. Very simple, right? A very important concept I would like to highlight. Before you draw the E t graph, always start with the phi t graph. The reason why is very simple. Guys, have you ever studied graph transformation in H2 math? All you have to do is like, literally if you take this as the fx graph, right? Very simple. You just differentiate it and then you get E t graph. But you take the negative. You flip it about the x-axis and that will give you f prime x. Very simple. You learn this in math. Nothing hard. So, very important. Start with phi t graph every time you're stuck. Then it moves to ET. Just a small change, what I wrote here is here guys, it's not vanished. Now the last form which they can ask you is the concept of a rotating disc. What is a rotating disc? Basically, a disc rotates. Okay, so you have a disc like this and it rotates with a velocity V. And you have B field that is incident. For example, it goes into the disc. Now, what is the formula of the EMF generator? Let's analyze. E is equal to VLV. Correct? But in this case, the V right here is not the same as the moving rod, which is linear. This is circular motion. Circular motion, you guys study, V is equal to R omega. The problem is, the velocity at this point is what? Zero. How about the velocity at this point? It is r omega. So do you use 0 or do you use r omega? We can't use both. We have to take the average velocity. So average. More clearly explained. V and V average, you just substitute it in. 
In this case, the L right here is just equals to R, which is the radius of the disk. So it is just half P R square omega. Because it's R omega over 2 and then it times the R and times the B, you get this. Now let's take it a bit further. In oscillations, you study that omega is equals to 2 pi F, correct? Look here, very important. This 2 and this 2 cancels. You understand that? Now, what is pi R square? You combine this, you get pi R square, which is equals to area. This is just circles, right? Learn this is a primary school. So it's very simple. You just arrange this and you'll get the formula BAF. So the important equations is BAF is equals to half BR square omega. Okay? BLB, this formula. Well, that's the main equation. These are all the things that you need to know. Now that you guys know this and watch till this part, I'm going to highlight to you the main misconceptions that people have. I even fell for it, so please listen carefully. A photo of this is actually in the description, so no worries, just check the description. Now comes a very important part of the video. Lot of people have misconceptions. What is the difference between induced EMF and induced current? What is the differences? There are a couple of differences, but I'll just highlight a couple of them. Number one, guys, is very obvious. A lot of people know. Induced current needs a closed circuit. So, a closed circuit can be a loop or some external circuit that, you know, like in a transformer, for example. Okay? Now, induced EMF can occur anywhere. It can be example, you have the same example, P field, a rod just moves, it just rod just moves. There will be an EMF across the two points, which I'll explain in the question just a moment. So no closed circuit. Neither. Okay? Just a change in the magnetic flux linkage is sufficient. Now, very important point comes here. I'm going to use a blue pen or a red pen even. Lot of people don't know this. Many people have this misconception. In an induced current, when current flows through, there is a magnetic force. Where does this magnetic force come from? We study this in electromagnetism. Come on, F is equals to B I L. You study. When current flows through the rod, there will be a retarding force. Due to Lenz law, you study Lenz law, right? There will be a retarding force to the motion of the rod. However, in induced EMF, there is no magnetic force because current is not even flowing. There's no flow of charges. How can there be a magnetic force generated by the electrons moving in the wire? Very important, guys. Very, very important. I fell for this big misconception. Please don't fall for it. Only if there's induced current, in the case of a closed circuit, there is a magnetic force. However, if it's not a closed circuit, if it's just like a rod moving through a magnetic field, there is no retarding force. But there is an EMF. Okay? Here is a question from my school that I studied in. Here is a question from Raffles Institution H2 Prelims 2010, which is where I studied. Here we have a rod that is moving with a velocity v, 20 meters per second. Length of the rod is 1.5 meters. The vertical component of the Earth's magnetic field is 5.0 less than the wall minus 5 Tesla. It's acting into the plane. The question is, number one, what is the magnitude of the EMF? Number two, which side of the rod is positive? Let's answer this question. Number one, to calculate the magnitude of the EMF, we just need to use manual, just sub in the values into the formulas. You don't need to use left hand rule, right hand rule just yet. So this is very simple for you guys. E is equals to B L V. You just sub in all the values and this one is a giveaway. 1.5 millivolts. The question which is a bit tricky is which side is positive. Now there are two ways you can approach this question guys. One is Fleming's right hand rule. Right hand rule, not left hand, that's electromagnetism. So you can just use it mechanically. The velocity is to the right. Magnetic field inwards, so the current goes this way. So the I goes upwards. The second way you can do it is 
Maxwell's right hand grip rule, which is personally my most favorite. As the rod is moving to the right, the B of vertical increases in the inward direction. So by Lenz law, it opposes external B field. It opposes. So the current will flow in a direction upwards that opposes the external B field. So this is right hand grip rule. You do this upwards, right? Now may be asking, wait, if it's right hand grip rule, this part is going inwards. This part is going upwards. Wait, I'm kind of confused. Isn't this adding to the B field? Okay, very important tip that I use during exams is just connect this to an imaginary galvanometer. Imaginary, it's not real. So it's kind of like a circuit. Now, as the rod moves through, this is the area that increases, right? This area increase, increase, increases. This is the part through which the earth magnetic field goes through. So you want to oppose this way. Not care, don't care about the part in front, the part behind, which is the area. Now the current goes upwards. How does this relate to the question? A lot of people have this misconception. There is a difference between current in battery versus current in circuit. Guys, do you know this difference? Current in the battery flows from negative to positive. Current in the circuit flows from positive to negative. So you guys, what can you do is treat this as a battery. Current flows upwards inside the battery, not outside, inside the battery. So current goes upwards, just follow this. This is negative, this is positive. Done. A lot of people confuse it with the second one and then you flip over the answer, which is wrong. So please understand this part, very important in MCQ. Please know why Maxwell right hand grip rule will give you upward current and not downward current, as I explained right here about the area and the imaginary galvanometer. Okay? You can use either of these two rules. Always use an imaginary galvanometer when you're approaching any kind of broad moving questions. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you found this video helpful. And if it does, do subscribe, turn on the notification bell, and give a thumbs up because that keeps you motivated to create much better content for you guys. All the mind maps, all the photo of the big mind map I drew is in the description. Do share this video with your friends because a lot of people need help for A-levels. I know you guys are physics champions. You will excel for your physics A-levels. Not to worry, I'm there for you. Just support me by subscribing and following what I say. Thank you so much.